So with this week's very unfortunate announcement that Nintendo will officially be discontinuing and fully shutting down the Wii U eShop and the 3DS eShop for all new purchases in March of 2023, I thought it would be a good opportunity to boot up the Wii U eShop together, go through some recommendations on what games you should check out specifically on that system, then walk through a list of some of the top charts on the 3DS and hopefully give you guys a couple new ideas of games that you really should look into and pick up before these shops go away forever. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunburn Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, it is the weekend. We're doing a little different style video today, and we have to look at the top charts in the Wii U eShop and then a little list of the 3DS eShop because I actually don't have the equipment to capture a screen capture a 3DS directly, but I do want to walk through some standout titles on the Wii U here today which of course is just for me memory lane this big controller it is clunky but you guys if you've seen recent videos you'll know that I want Nintendo to maybe in the future generation bring back some kind of tablet touchscreen style controller I think that would be a really nice move and let's hop into the charts here where we can see um, just basically what's selling the best right now I'm sure certain titles are going up more than others uh, with basically the factor that people know that this is about to shut down now or at least you have some more time to prepare for the purchases. Luckily, Nintendo gave us a heads up uh, window on when to purchase these. Uh, but at the same time, if you're a new gamer later on and you become a fan of some of these games after these are discontinued, that's where the real unfortunate part is for game preservation as a whole. Um, but let's go ahead and, and top, start, start off by talking through the top best sellers uh, right now, which number one is actually Super Mario Advance 4, which is actually Mario Bros. 3. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that one so much as that's on the uh, NSO, uh, the NSO service as part of the NES and also as part of the Super Mario All-Stars collection on the SNES. So there's multiple ways to play that game. The uh, the, the Super Super NES one is by far and away the way to play it if you want to ask me. Um, then, you know, here's where we start to get into an interesting title. Some of the virtual console games that are on the Wii U eShop shop are GBA or Game Boy Advance games like Zelda Minish Cap, one that I've been advocating for to make it to NSO. We have to get Game Boy Advance on NSO, especially if Nintendo's pulling the plug on purchasing a game like this and being able to play it on a TV, mind you. As you know, you can go back to the GameCube and plug in the physical cartridge to a Game Boy player. But outside of that, there's no good way to play this on a TV. And the Minish Cap is a fantastic Zelda experience. Next up, and this one is a must if you guys are at all Metroid fans, and I do hope we get these games ported to the Switch. It's looking like most likely individual remakes as opposed to the whole trilogy, so it's, it might be a steal, and it is a steal, to pick up Metroid Prime Trilogy digitally on the Wii U for $19.99. Now, of course, this is the Wii version of the game, so they are not running an HD resolution or anything like that, But and some people don't like the motion controls, myself included. I definitely prefer Metroid Prime 1 and 2 to be played with a controller. Obviously, Prime 3 Corruption, the only way you can play that is with uh, the, the Wiimote, but I, I think this is a steal. In fact, it is a steal because just look on eBay, go look at what this game is selling for right now physically. I think it's upwards of 100 bucks easy for anything in decent condition, so definitely worth picking up the next one on the list another steal guys a game that we're waiting on for nintendo to bring to the switch in an hd port why they haven't done it yet i don't know i mean somebody needs to talk to nintendo and you know get some sense in their mind i think we're still going to get them one day i'm hopeful we will they will be individual releases most likely for 60 bucks and i think they're going to spread them out it would be wind waker and then we'll get twilight princess eventually but wind waker hd 19.99 on the wii u eShop, like it's kind of it's kind of crazy to think about because if you want to go buy a used Wii U, it's truly some of the ch it's the cheapest way to play a lot of games right now. There's that still hold up great to this day. Next up on our list, we have Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. You will know recently on the channel we've been talking about how this one is still sorely missing from NSO, and I was really hoping when we got that Earthbound edition at the last direct that maybe Nintendo would continue with some other classic titles that are missing. This being one of them, we even had the creator of this game just go on record stating that he would like to create a sequel to this in a new Mario RPG game, and I hope that that happens. But of course, that's just the the creator of or director rather of this game, and it's it's not up it's not up to him at the end of the day. So obviously, Nintendo has to sign off on those plans. Uh, then we got Metroid Fusion, another game that every Metroid fan needs to check out. Absolutely, uh, hands down, a quality experience. It's technically 
uh, Metroid 4 in the storyline. So like for everybody who's new to Dread, I will encourage you guys to go chronologically one day through the story of starting off with the first Metroid being Zero Mission, uh, where it's really on the NES and you can play that now. But if you can pick up Zero Missions that was released on the Game Boy Advance, that's a far better version. Uh, then, of course, do the remake Samus Returns. Uh, then you would go to Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, and then ultimately Metroid Dread, which is, you know, ties up the story arc for all of these games. Uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, also known as the February title that is right around the corner. Now, there is one big gripe. Uh, as much as I love just pr to promote the virtual console games on the Wii U, and they are great, uh, there is a big problem the same way that I've talked about bad emulation ta tactics on the NSO. For whatever reason, I don't know if this will uh, be highlighted in the screenshots here. But I'm going to click on it just to see. For whatever reason, Nintendo chose to put a very dark filter over... This actually doesn't look bad right here. Um, but I don't know if maybe... Well, that looks dark, but you know, obviously it's a dark room. I don't know if maybe it, it doesn't show up as well on the screenshots, but here's the deal. Nintendo put a very dark filter on the N64 game specifically on the Wii U eShop, which was a real big blow because for $9.99, I want this game to look as great as possible. And quite honestly, that dark filter, you can look up side-by-side -side comparisons. Like, thank goodness they got rid of that for NSO because that was a big problem and a big gripe for the N64 games. And I think it was just to reduce flashes for, you know, the bright, bright flashes that could potentially, you know, hurt people that have uh, epilepsy and things, you know, cause seizures. Uh, you you want to tone those down and you want to do it through a different tactic than just throwing a dark filter over the entire screen. Nintendo just chose to do the dark filter on the Wii U, which is one big miss uh, for the uh, Wii U library of virtual console games, specifically on the N64. Uh, now, Metroid Zero Mission, that's actually the one that I was just recommending to you guys. Uh, I didn't, I thought, this is interesting. So I, I was thinking that when we got to Twilight Princess HD, that that might be marked down to 1999 also like wind waker it's 49.99 so that's still a full price release technically of course when uh, twilight princess released after wind waker hd but again another one i would just pick it up physically at that point you know i would pick up I, I mean i own these games physically already but i would encourage you guys just to pick up physical copies so you don't have to worry about you know the if if your wii u ever goes down nintendo saying that we can re-download these games for the foreseeable future but we also don't know when they're going to pull that plug and some outlets have said that it's not going to be that long after they shut down the store that they stop letting you re-download things then you're living in a world where for some reason your save data or your download data ever gets corrupted you, you'll never get it back and you'll never be able to play those games again and that's really the the down the biggest downside to all of this also just noticing right now and it's not like the best background music ever i really enjoy having background music in a e-shop like this i wish uh nintendo would step up on the current uh deal with the switch uh legend of zelda spirit tracks a nintendo ds game playable on a tv this is how you play this game it's the best way and this is something that i really hope if we do get a next gen switch or even if they just come out with a controller accessory at some point in the current switch's life cycle which i think is way less likely i think this is probably a gimmick for a future system if they do it at all but i would love to have the ds and 3ds games playable up res and you have a two screen experience again but on the tv Right beneath it, you have Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Both these games, $9.99, incredible, incredible handheld titles, incredible handheld Zeldas, highly recommend them. Continuing down the list, we have, of course, Zelda Ocarina of Time, which again, would suffer from that same dark filter screen. I really think that even though maybe input delay is better uh, on this version of the game, that dark filter defeats it for me. So I wouldn't recommend it on the Wii U as opposed to NSO. Of course, only being the fact that with the Wii U, you can technically own it as part of the virtual console, as opposed to the subscription service you always have to pay to have access to that game. Uh, then from there, we have Paper Mario, Mario Kart 64, Donkey Kong 64. Gosh dang it, Nintendo. When are you announcing that for NSO? Because I'm absolutely ready for that game to make it over. It will get pretty pricey. Uh, I didn't mean to click on that. It will get pretty pricey if you guys start to really add up you know, all of the virtual console purchases that you have to make to get the games you want. Like it definitely does add up fast. You have $9.99 to pop. Um, so pretty fast, you're going to be paying over what the annual subscription is for expansion pack. Uh, Golden Sun, The Lost Age. Wow. I mean, what a, ga what a game we need to have. And again, this would be something that could easily come over if we ever get Game Boy Advance added in to Nintendo Switch Online. Mario Party 2. I'm hopeful that the classic Mario Party games will make it to um, NSO eventually as, you know, at least one or two of them I would like to see on there. And I think that data mine list suggested that there is room for them. Mario 64 DS. Little known fact about this game is, is that it's actually a better graphical version than the uh, original Mario 64. And so still texture wise, even though the resolution is extremely low on the DS, 
if you upscale it it technically is the best looking version of mario 64 not to mention i think they did like different things with the camera and care obviously you can play as different characters so a really cool addition and another great ds game that you can play on a tv only through the wii u then of course we have golden sun on the game boy advance super mario galaxy 2 this is one that i would buy especially considering the price of it physically it's on sale for 19.99 on the wii u eShop. And then you have to have the conversation that this is the only Mario Galaxy that, or of course, out of the two, we got Mario Galaxy 1, but not two uh, brought over as part of the uh, Mario 3D All-Stars collection. So it's like, that's a great 3D Mario game right there that's just stuck on the Wii, uh, but you can get it on the Wii U for the, uh, for the $20 price point digitally. So another one I would highly recommend. And just for interest of time, we're only gonna walk through the top 20 list um, on, this, on this Wii U, and then we'll, we'll hop through a list of 3ds games and and uh or, or the 3ds eShop here in a second but what i do want to tell you guys is for the digital games that you may be interested in that are only available digitally and that never got a physical release i will have a link to a nintendo life article in the uh, in the uh, description box rather under sources where you will be able to go through and see all of the digital games that are kind of like the top rated ones that won't be available at all ever after the 3ds or uh, and the wii u eShop are discontinued so you might want to pay attention to that list as well because while these virtual console games and some of the price points on these are the only way to play them there's also a whole nother chunk of games that will just literally permanently be wiped from history once these stores go away which is just the worst part of living in a you know digital slash physical world that we're in now and next i'll list off some of the top games on the 3ds eShop charts so the top 20 games on the 3DS eShop charts reads as follows. Pokemon Crystal, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Red, Pokemon Gold. I think people realize that we're about to lose a lot of Pokemon games once this thing goes away, not to mention the whole recent announcement of Pokemon Bank being free. And I believe that if I'm not mistaken, there's a way to get pretty much all of your old Pokemon transferred through literally like just about any version of Pokemon game. Like there's workarounds to get the whole thing done to where you can get everything into pokemon bank and then ultimately i believe that that will talk to pokemon home on the switch so that's a pretty cool deal you may look into there's there, there's videos walking through that entire process if you guys are interested then we have a game number five on the list that i've never heard of and you guys let me know if i'm missing out on this one but it's called tamadachi life number six is zelda ocarina of time 3d can we please get that version eventually ported over to the switch it looks fantastic when upgrazed and i really hope that we do see both that and majora's mask make it over but again, those are some handheld Zelda games that you will want. I mean, they're literally some of the best ways to play Ocarina of Time. The best way, in my opinion, minus the fact that you can't just play it on a TV and it has to be locked to handheld only. Other than that, that is definitively the best version of Ocarina of Time. That's number six on the charts. And a couple more Pokemon games. We have Pokemon Silver up next, Pokemon Blue. Then number nine, Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. Of course, the same sentiment goes for that as Ocarina of Time 3D. The best case scenario would be if Nintendo put those two in a combo pack, up res them, even if they sell it, sell it for 80 bucks, which is uncharacteristic of Nintendo, maybe they would just do them individually at 60 each. Regardless, they could charge me 80 for that. I would be more than happy just to be able to play them on the Switch, whatever they want to do, but I do hope we see those make it over one day. I'm sure they'll wait for some of the hype around NSO and that being the first way to play those games on the Switch to kind of have some time in the spotlight before they go put the superior versions of the game uh, on onto the Switch for us in terms of an HD remaster, or maybe they just wait a while and do another from the ground up remaster of those games on something like the next gen Switch. That all remains to be seen. And Animal Crossing New Leaf comes in at number 10, Pokemon Omega Ruby at 11, Super Mario Bros. 3 at 12, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire at 13, Zelda Oracle of Ages at number 14, and Zelda Oracle of Seasons at number 15. Again, two great Zelda games that you will want to look into picking up, as that is just probably the best and easiest way to play them right now and they are portable games so they are definitely they feel better to play on a handheld than most other zeldas and i'm hopeful that eventually nintendo gives those the link's awakening remaster treatment and we see something similar to how we saw that game brought to switch also brought over for those because in my humble opinion i think i if i'm remember, remembering right and it's been a while i thoroughly enjoyed those games and i would say that i would actually rank them above link's awakening in terms of like handheld zelda titles and so i would be ecstatic if we ever get that announcement and hopefully it happens soon 
Number 16 is Pokemon Ultra Sun, 17 Pokemon Y, and Steam World Dig at 18. 19 is Zelda Link Between Worlds, the last original 2D Zelda installment, if you think about it, and it's kind of crazy how long it's been since that game has come out now. I still hope we see the 2D Zeldas or like, you know, 2.5D 2 or even overhead style, whatever they want to do. I hope we see original titles of those continue because they have such a cool feel to them. And A Link Between Worlds was not only just a big callback and tribute to A Link to the Past, but it also just had such cool mechanics with that whole deal with Link being able to go onto the wall to solve certain puzzles puzzles and things like the entire experience for that game is 10 out of 10 for me I absolutely enjoyed it then number 20 is Super Mario 3D Land which again will be a 3DS exclusive and one that you may want to look into picking up as that is a very enjoyable title too and we got it, it really is like the handheld version of Super Mario 3D World. So those are definitely some games that because they are the top 20 of each eShop chart that you will want to look into yourself. Definitely go through and check out that Nintendo Life article that references the digital only games that will ultimately be going away and discontinued forever. And at this point in the video, guys, I want to hear from you personally on how you're you know feeling about this whole announcement with the Wii U and 3DS eShops getting shut down. If you're planning on hopping into either of the stores and maybe even tracking down a Wii U if you don't own one and trying to pick up some of these titles ahead of time i want to hear from you guys on your game plan before the stores ultimately get shut down in march of 2022 in terms of new purchases so please share all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below before you leave the video as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around this topic Make sure you check out yesterday's video if you haven't already, where we cover some good news for Nintendo Switch Online with a very big needed fix for N64 emulation. Also, please make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.